Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. What's up? Not much. I had an interesting thought <clears throat> that I wanted to... Don't look surprised. <laughs> uh, that came from a conversation we had the other day at our dinner table, actually, when, if you remember, we were talking to our beautiful teenage son about his love of his phone. Oh, yeah. That was at a, on that couch. I was thinking about, and I was talking to somebody else today on a phone call who also has a teenage son, and she happens to be the um, head of curriculum and instruction for a large yeah. school district. Yeah. And she said, yeah. She said, you take what's happening in the home and you multiply it, just getting students engaged and able to be present in any level of school is impossible. Yeah. So I was thinking about electronics and phones and things and it just seems like they're they're robbing really are you trying to be What'd funny you are you trying to be funny <laughs> sorry i was on my phone yeah <laughs> i'm doom scrolling over here i was just thinking about you know we we talk about up thinking we talk about thinking the relationship between electronics electronic use and Stop. De-thinking. And de-think. The de-thinking is a good way to think about it. Yes. And I bet a lot of people are sh are sharing the struggle that we have personally yeah. and I see now professionally. And I was just thinking, you know, what do we do about this de-thinking as you say it? What do we do about pulling people back into the present and, and being more thoughtful in the, in the world of constant distraction? Yeah. One word. Actually, one word and a synonym, because the first word, maybe people want to know or it won't resonate. But the second word, which is a synonym for the first word, will. Okay. Metacognition. Awareness. Awareness. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, you know, so there's two things going on that you can, there's, there's the fact that these things are incredibly addicting on purpose um, yeah. for everybody, right? And then there's the whole parenting aspect of it, which is like you're trying to get a young person to, you know, exist in the world without being completely tied to this thing. <clears throat> um, and so in both of those cases, awareness, simple awareness or metacognition is probably the most effective tool against it. Okay. In the case of the parenting, you know, I think a lot of it is like we're gonna regulate it. We're gonna t we got all these now. Now the phone has all these things that you can do to regulate it, and yeah, th those are all interesting. But what they're not doing is helping the person, d right? Because if if the kid is having an issue, mm -hmm. and at the same time the parents are having the same issue, we see this. You know, you go to dinner and you see a whole yeah. family of people covering four generations, and they're all on their phone, right? Yeah. So this isn't just a kid issue. These things are addictive. Right. And so if, if all we do as parents is regulate it, mm -hmm. administrate it, the use, right. then you're, you're basically raising somebody that as soon as that regulation disappears, they're going to be addicted to their phone right? because they're not going to develop self. the metacognitive self, yeah. self-regulating abilities and awareness to be able to deal with it. And so, you know, as, as you know, with, with our kids... Probably the most effective thing that we've done with our kids mm -hmm. is really have deep conversations about the fact that this thing isn't what it appears, this little thing right here, right? right? What this is, is a window yeah. into your life, right? Into your attention. Mm -hmm. And it allows people to pass things through the window, through the doorway, whatever you want to think of it as. Think of it as like a little doorway into you, into your attention, into your belief systems, into your mental models, into everything, into your purchasing, all of it. Yeah. And when you turn this thing on, you're giving a bunch of people access to control that what goes through that door. Right. Now, the question is, who are those people? So on the other side of this, because because you look at this and you go, oh, well, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing, yeah. you know, it, it, untoward yeah. about this thing. But the fact is, 
you've got teams of some of the smartest, most educated people in the world, the multi-diverse, multi-educated, multidisciplinary. You've got psychologists, you've got engineers, you've got business people, you've got marketing people, you've got messaging people, you've got linguists, you've got every possible, anybody yeah. in the world who has a skill is on these teams. And they're getting paid a lot of money. And they're getting paid a lot of money to get your time, your energy. And they're working attention. together yeah. to get your attention, mm -hmm. to get your money, to get your votes, to get your what mostly attention. Mm -hmm. Mostly attention because they're getting paid because you're their product. Right. Right. The more you pay attention, the more they can sell. Right. And so they're creating, they're understanding your brain and how it works at the chemical level. Yes. At the neuroscience and, and chemistry level of your brain. They're understanding what makes addiction happen. Right. And they're getting you addicted on purpose. Mm. So they are using you. So you think, I'm going to buy this phone and I'm going to use it as a tool. But the tool is using you. You're getting used. And I think if you, if kids understand that, yeah, like no human wants to get used. You know, you don't have to no. be an adult not to want to no. get used. Nobody wants to get not. used. And once you open up the awareness a little bit that, wait a minute, like I'm not just, it's not just about me using this thing. It's about this thing is using me. Right. Once you have that awareness, then you can start to be like, do I want that in my life? Do I want to be this thing's bitch, right? Do, do I do I want to be that to right. this to this thing? Do I want to give this thing that much control? Right. I mean, I think part of the <clears throat> part of the issue is, especially with teenagers, or even I mean, I see I see young children mm -hmm. out with actual you know phones with yes. all the video and everything. Surprising to me. We were, we were, we waited until they were a certain age before they got phones. But I mean, it's hard to, it's, it, I think it's hard for younger people in particular to see that distinction you're making between, you know, you being used and you using the phone or you mm -hmm. being the product versus the phone being the product because they're watching cat videos. They're watching, right. yeah, so it seems they're texting innocuous. their friends. They're taking self, you know, the whole selfie thing. They're taking selfies everywhere they go and posting it. So, I guess part of it is what you said, the, d the deep conversation and making that relationship for people. Yes. People don't see that relationship yeah. the same way that, that we have talked about it. And I think, I mean, obviously that's part of awareness, being aware of that relationship between what's being shown on your phone and what people are trying to get from you by showing it to you. That's right. Um, so I don't know. I mean, how do you, how do you help kids make that distinction? Well, I think first, you know, you don't want to, I think, I think it's a mistake to let this phone be in between you and your child. And the way, the fastest way to do that is, is to try to control it. Mm. What you want to do is try to help them control it. Right. Right. And with the younger ones, that's a little, that's difficult because they, they, they don't even really have the metacognitive awareness and so you got to work with them at a young age. If you're gonna let your kid have a phone at a young age, you got to work on the metacognition at a young age. And that met metacognition just means like having a little bit of an eyeball oh, yeah. on what you're doing, right? It's just this little eyeball. That's all metacognition is. Is just take you got 90 billion neurons, take up a, a handful of them, and get them to pay attention to you, like kind of rise up above and be like, oh, what's that monkey doing? Mm -hmm. that me, me, the monkey on my phone. Do, do, do. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, I'm death scrolling. Oh, OK. Like that's just a little bit of monkey, a, a metacognition on the yeah. monkey. Yeah. And you kind of say, wait a minute, do I really want to be that monkey or do I want to be a different monkey? Right. Right. And that is going to make all the difference. And so you got to have that conversation with them and, and have them be invested in not being a monkey, not being, yeah. not being, choosing not being wanna, used. Yeah. Choosing how they want to be. Yeah. And who they want to be. And I think that is effective because it, it appeals to their, 
to their sense of agency, right? I mean, kids want to be independent. They want to have agency. They want to have freedom. And if they realize, oh, wow, you know, I don't want my parents controlling me, but I don't want this thing controlling me either. Right. And this thing's controlling my thoughts. It's controlling my echo chambers. It's controlling what I see, what I, yeah. how I spend my time, yeah. all this kind of stuff. Well, part of it in the conversation that, that some of the conversations we've had is people often don't see the opportunity cost of things. Yeah. Right. And so part of it is saying, you know, you just spent X number of hours on your phone, right. which on its surface seems fine <laughs> to most people. But what was the cost of that? You right. didn't go outside. Right. You didn't have a snack. You didn't, you know, you've neglected, you've neglected some other part. You weren't present in a moment that you could have been present. So, for example, if you're on a boat somewhere and you're looking at your phone and you're not seeing the scenery of the place you've traveled through. And I think a lot of people lose sight of that. Right. You know, the opportunity cost, which is you know, part of the things that we think about and talk about a lot is what are you missing? What are you choosing not to see? Yeah, and your kids might not care about the seeing yeah. the scenery of the That's boat, true. you know, so, th so that might not go over well. But what will go over well is like, hey, you know, look at how much time you spent on your phone today, right? You can, you can look it yeah, up on your phone. Thing. And then calculate if you, on average, if you spend that much time on your phone every day for all of high school, that's four years. That's a lot. And then calculate, you know, let them see the big macro, right? Mm -hmm. Connect the micro behavior to the macro and ask them, you, you do the calculation, you figure it out. How many hours will you have spent on your phone from freshman to senior year? Right. How many hours is that? And what could you do with that number of hours? Yes. Right? Yeah. And that, that kind of puts it in a, a slightly different perspective, right? Right. And, and it lets them see the macro kind of properties of, of these micro behaviors. Because when you're in it, you're just like, this is a funny cat video. Or what? there's not even cats anymore. It's like memes and things. But um, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> you're not speaking a language. I understand yeah, right like, now. Uh, like death scrolling? I don't even know what that is. Death scrolling doom is like scrolling. When doom scrolling, where you're just you're just going and going and going, and it, it like Instagram is super addictive. You just, Why is it called doom scrolling? Because it's like a, a cycle of doom. You're like, you like you just can't get. You're out just of like it. circling the bowl. You can't get out of it because it's so addictive. Ah. Uh -huh. It's like eating potato chips. Mindlessly. Right. Like you, the yeah. reason you pour potato chips. Well, I don't eat potato chips, but if you did, you put them in a bowl. And, and then you get to the bottom of the bowl. The reason you don't sit with a bag is because you, you're going <laughs> to, if you're a human, you're, you're going to finish that bag. <laughs> well, Instagram is an infinitely large bag of potato chips. Not nutritious, but tasty. It is, yeah, yeah, zero nutrition. Yeah. And lots of salt and, sure, you know, whatever. And, and, uh, and you're going to scroll. You're just going to scroll. I, I guarantee if you're a human, you're going to get addicted to it if you do it long enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you remember we were we, we were we were traveling lately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you all laughed at me hysterically. I was I think uh, something wasn't working on the plane, and I had nothing to do, so I was looking. I started looking at videos. I had didn't realize there were videos. I know this is going to be embarrassing, probably at the end. And I said I said to you all after we got off the phone, uh, got off the plane. I said, oh, you know those videos are really interesting, fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And you all laughed at me because I was like. <laughs> Because it's true. Once you start watching them, you just you keep going because they're so varied and they're so quick and they're visually interesting. You know, there's like dog, puppies and cats and then there's people jumping on bikes. And yeah, and I, th yeah. I think what's that is interesting. And there's no doubt that you're going to get yeah. addicted to scrolling. Yeah. But now put it in the put in the idea that behind that video is like thousands of people whose job it is to find the next video that's gonna has the highest probability of manipulating you to watch it and as soon as you're watching that one they're thinking about the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one and it's all an algorithm right right and there there's the, all these people like mm -hmm. people that study the mind people that study the body people that study engineering people that study software people that study marketing mm -hmm. all these people that are so good at their jobs they're right. so knowledgeable are all behind 
trying yeah. to figure out how to manipulate you not to shut it off, not right. to put it down. So then I guess the question is, you know, you were talking about helping people develop awareness, self, the ability to self-regulate, control. How, how do we do that? Like people who are listening are probably like, well, okay, that sounds great, but how do I actually do it? Yeah, I, I would just recommend, you know, that you that you have more conversations with your kid about it and, and less like preachy, like, mm -hmm. you know, judgy conversations and more just like, hey, I have the same problem. I'm a full blown adult and this stuff is addictive. Mm -hmm. So and sometimes I find myself picking up my phone without even without even thinking about it. It's just like this action, this very addictive action. Right. And, and so I get it. I get, you know, especially f for a, a young brain, it's very addictive and there's, there's a lot. And then, and then we're sending them to the possibly the most boring place on earth, you know, in school. And, and so, and then we're giving, and then they're like school or this, they're like, right. oh, well, okay, that's an easy, this is entertaining. Yeah. School is like doldrums of, of boredom. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, you you want to have that conversation that is designed to get them to self-regulate and to have the awareness that they're being manipulated, right? My, I used to come out. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I'm wearing a logo shirt today. So, uh, <laughs> so um, I used to come out like ready for school, and I'd be wearing some shirt. You know, because it's hard to some shirt, some that shirt popular. that had that was popular, OP or something like that, or Nike 70s. or whatever it was in the eighties, and Izod or something, right? Yeah. Remember Izod with the alligator? Izod. They're coming back, you know. Izod. I know. I'd come out, and my dad would be like, "They paying you?" And it was just that little moment of metacognition. That's all it was. It was. It was like a joke. Mm -hmm. He didn't. It wasn't judgy. It wasn't anything. It was just kind of like a question. Yeah. And it caused me to be aware of, oh, they pay me. Why would they? Oh, they pay me because I'm wearing the shirt. I'm advertising yeah. for them. Yeah. Interesting. You know, that's interesting. Just a moment of pause. Yeah. Just it's just moment. like a moment of pause. Yeah. A moment. It, when you create those moments of pause, you create the, the inside that pause. Mm -hmm. You can put awareness. You can put thought. You can put metacognition. Just right. that meta thought on thought. Right. And and so if you just do things to create that moment of pause, like, wow, how many people right now are getting paid how much money mm -hmm. to manipulate your brain to keep that phone scrolling? Right. I mean, just it's, those are astronomical numbers. If you think about how many people are getting paid how much. Mm -hmm just to get you to keep scrolling it's a lot it's, it's a lot, lot of money and it's a lot of people and it's a lot of effort and little old you on the other side of that phone mm -hmm. is getting manipulated by all of that right and who wants to be a part of that who wants to be the article of a focus of that manipulation i don't think I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but for me, that that's almost repulsive to me. Like right. I, I have a, a repulsion to that. It makes me feel kind of like icky. Yeah. I don't know if other people feel that way, but it, it yeah. If you can get that ick feeling, yeah. Then, then the self regulation will happen because you'll get that ick feeling. Right, and so you'll 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 choose to not be yeah. the agent of others. You'll be your own agent. You said at the very beginning, you were joking, you said de-thinking, yeah. right? And I guess what what I would think about with that is you're thinking about things, but you're thinking about things that people want you to think about right? when you're on that, when you're involved in the, what you call it, doom scrolling and all of those things. Yeah. So when you say de-thinking, what did you mean by that? Well, it's, it's just very passive, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, you're just, it's all stuff coming at you uh is very passive um it's designed to be that way it's design it's not really designed to do you're not doing a lot of thinking right it's it's kind of it's filling the space so that you don't have to do much thinking it's it right. makes it so that it rather than just sitting 
with your thoughts, you're sitting with stimulus. Right. Oh, right? That's a good way to think about it. I mean, there was a study that I just read, uh, just came out that said, like, the more toys kids have, the less they play. Oh, yeah. You know, and I think mm-hmm. that's very similar to de thinking. It's like the more stimulus you have, the less you're going to think. The more information that's coming at you yeah. passively, the less you need to think because you you have something to entertain you. Yeah. You know, when we were kids, a long time. I mean, we were just bored out of our minds. There was nothing to do, so we were always figuring out new ways to make things yeah. interesting. You know, we would make basketball nets out of you know grocery carts and things like that, and That's and, right. and kick the can down, kick the, road. the can down the road, and we would just invent games. Mud we, pies. What? You remember mud pies? Well, girls used to make mud pies. I don't. We used to make we used to make bakeries out of dirt, like oh. mud. Like we'd make different things and pretend we're in a, like, I mean, it was in just like a kitchen or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Oh, that's something cool. girls did. We made like things out of mud. Ah, we used to throw uh, cow patties. <laughs> I never touched. This is like a mud pie. <laughs> That's a boy thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's but funny. that's what I mean. Like you, you yeah. when when you have less toys, you do more play because you're more generative. Because you're yeah, more you're more generative. And, you're more. You yeah. have to. You have to interact with the world, right? So in a sense, this is deep. Now, I don't want to say that this thing is all bad. That that's not the point, and I don't think that's the point we want to make with our kids because we no. don't. You know, I think the idea is. You use it, don't yes. let it use you. That's right. that's the critical metacognitive sort of di- distinction that we have to make is, mm-hmm. yes, this is a powerful tool. It's, it's got the world at your fingertips. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. It makes it so that you can travel and work and do all these other things, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it makes it so you can find out things really fast and order things and all, all kinds of, and, it, and it's entertaining. Yeah. And all of that is wonderful if... You're using it. Yes. When it becomes unwonderful is when it's is using when you. it's using you. Yeah. And that's that's the critical distinction that you we want our we want to make ourselves, but we also want our young people to make is like don't be a tool. Mm-hmm. Literally, don't Literally. be a tool. It's not a good thing. <laughs> Never be a tool, right? <laughs> Use funny. tools, but don't become a tool. Yeah. It's an it's a simple idea. It's not easy to do. It involves you're not going to have one conversation. Mm-mm. You're going to have a, a conversation every week, every uh, every couple times a week maybe. Yeah. But I probably wouldn't. You know, I would avoid making it judgy. Avoid making confrontational. it confrontational. Confrontational. Just make it conversational. Make it like, oh, isn't this interesting that so many people mm-hmm. have assembled so many talents. And so many resources just to mess around with the, the neurochemistry of your brain yeah, to get it so that you will go like this. Right. Over and over. Over and over and over and but over the conversation, But the conversation should happen fairly frequently and in the moment because that's how that, that person is going to develop that awareness. That's They're right. going to learn it in that moment. Yeah. Oh, I have been sitting here for two hours. I didn't realize that. Now I need to be reflective of that. <clears throat> yeah. And I'll think about why, like what what was it that caused me to sit here when I didn't totally. actually intend to sit here? Yep. You know, I had other plans or whatever. So I think I think that's good. Yeah, like if you're sitting and, and let's say you're hanging out together and it's this this uh, you, this like autonomic pickup, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. There's this automaticity, yeah. Yeah. right? Just say, hey, you know, were you aware that you just did that? Yeah. That's it. Isn't there a thing on your phone that it'll tell you how many times you picked up your phone? In I'm a sure day there is. Yeah. Or something like that. But it's 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 just that, right? It's yeah. it's like have the awareness that you're picking it up. Yeah. Because I notice my my myself, I I you know I study metacognition and yes. I pick it up and then I'm doing and then I'm like, why am I doing that? Like I mean, I, mean, I don't even know why I'm picking it right. up. Right. But that's the moment we want to build for people. Yes. That why am I doing that? Why am I doing that? I just did something. I'm paying attention to my own behavior. Why? What caused me to do that? Because yeah. I didn't actually intend to do that. It just sort of happened subconsciously. I didn't do it for a reason. It's not like I'm answering my phone right. or right. like, oh, I need to look something up. I just did it out of like habit. I had a brief moment of nothingness. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to fill the nothingness. Right. And that 
automatic, that automaticity is the one we want to yeah. try to have metacognition against. Well, and one could argue that those moments of nothingness help us stay sane. Yes. Help us be more reflective, help us have a little bit of, I mean, there's so much stimulus yes. in a daily life. Having those moments where your brain almost gets to take a breath. That's right. And pause and be clean and clear. I mean, I think I think that's why, I, to be honest, I talk to people and everyone is overwhelmed, exhausted, overloaded. And I think it's because, it's my theory or my hypothesis, my sorry, yeah, my hypothesis, yeah. is that people are so stimulated so constantly and they're not aware of it. That it's actually exhausting. It's mentally exhausting. It's absolutely. But we're not we're not thinking about it. Well, if us neurodiverse folks, we know this, right? Yeah. This is why, like, for me, I need downtime in my day, or I will be insane by the end of the day. So I built yeah. downtime into yeah. my day, be in, in the same way that an atom, you know, an atom is mostly empty. The the physical matter of the universe in an atom, most of it is emptiness, yeah. right? Yeah. Emptiness is important. Uh huh. And so if you don't build a little bit of emptiness, a little bit of a, a little bit of breathing room into your day, I mean that's why I wake up early in the morning to have breathing room in my day and get and kind of think about what's important and 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 get some things done like working out and all that kind of stuff that's important. Um, you know, you got to have that space in your day. If you're if you're scheduling meetings back to back to back to back, it's crazy. It's crazy making. But crazy I but making. what I'm saying is the meetings back to back to back to back for a teenager are video to video to video to video to video to video to video. Like there's no space there. Or class to class to class to class right. to class to class. Yes, right? I mean exactly. it's 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 crazy making. Yeah. So we have to be more purposeful and more thoughtful about, you know, taking care of of needing that ebb and that flow and and being aware when we're autonomically doing things because like you said there's people back there with clip bars you know trying to manipulate us to get us to pick it up every minute yeah. instead of every three minutes yeah. um and things like that so it's good it's interesting i think that might be a wrap okay what do you think do you think it's a wrap it's a wrap is it a wrap like and subscribe and then put your phone down <laughs> And do something else. <laughs> and do something else. Go make, get like uh, extra outside. Go outside, take a nap, hug your mother, do something else. <laughs> that was like a mother, a shameless mother plug. I'm just saying, hug your mother. Your mother misses you if you're not there. <laughs> what about your time. father? Hug your father and your mother. Okay. Hug your mother. Hug people you love. Yeah, hug somebody. All right. Now we should probably wrap. Yeah.